Whoa, you hear that? Only on turns when I'm accelerating? Sounds like a bad CV joint. Let's check it out. Some of the symptoms you're gonna find if you have a faulty CV joint is noise, vibrations, binding, a ripped boot, and grease flying out. Here we have a CV axle. This is what we're gonna be looking into on this vehicle. 1A Auto sells many CV axles along with other parts. If you need parts or CV axles for your vehicle, make sure you click the link in the description. Head over to 1AAuto.com. If you have a front wheel drive vehicle, an all wheel drive vehicle, or even a pickup truck that's four wheel drive, you're gonna have CV axles in the front of the vehicle. And that's what gets the power from the engine through the transmission to the wheels. With the vehicle up in the air, you wanna spin the wheel around and just see if you can hear any clicking noise. Most likely you're not because there's no load on the wheels, there's nothing binding up. So. The reason you get the clicking noise is because the internals of the CV joint are binding up and you're not gonna have that right now. You can always take the wheel, just give it a shake side to side, see if there's anything loose. And also check the lug nut torque. Sometimes loose lug nuts could give you a clicking noise. Everything's tight, let's go underneath. Here we have the engine right here and the power is gonna go to the transmission. Now we need to get the power to the wheels and that's through the axles or CV shafts, sometimes they call them half shafts. You have a joint on this side and there's a boot, there's some grease in there and a couple ball bearings that are going around. And then on this side, this is a tripod joint. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but it's very similar and it's got a boot on it as well. And most of the time you're gonna hear your clicking, it's from this side because there's a lot of movement that is involved with that. What we're looking on this side is to see if we see any grease slinging out. A lot of times if you look at the caliper or even the bottom of the shock, if you see a lot of grease in that area, there's probably a hole in the boot somewhere or the boot has ripped. A lot of times over time, the boot will rip. In this situation, it looks like the boot has actually popped off and you're getting a lot of road debris in there, a lot of sand and dirt. That's going to cause the joint to wear out faster. You can slide this off. Take a look at that. But even just a pinhole, if someone was working on a brake job or something, or even a wheel bearing and they just nicked the boot a little bit, that's going to cause grease to come out. You're going to get elements in there and it's going to cause stuff to wear out faster. Now there should be clamps holding this boot on both on this side and also this clamp. Now this is loosened up and that's not the way it's supposed to happen. Um, this should not, you should not be able to just slide this off like this. So Now in some cases, if you just had a little pinhole and it's slinging some grease out, the joint itself, as long as it's not making noise, you might be able to get away with just replacing the boot. But if it is ripped open or you see lots of sand in there or it's even making noise, there's nothing you can do. You can't replace just the boot. You're gonna have to replace the whole axle. Sometimes there is rebuild kits for the CV joint itself, but for the most part, it's easy enough just to replace the whole axle. So we know this side is obviously bad. This needs to be replaced. We know the noise was coming from that side. We definitely wanna check the other side and just be sure that there's nothing going on here as well. And this boot looks good. There is no grease slinging out. Everything is intact. That's the way it should look. All right, let's get the axle out, start taking it apart. Take the wheels off. Another thing you can do is look at the back of the wheel. If you see a lot of grease, you know it's gotta be coming from somewhere. It's most likely coming from the CV joints. Now I'll pull the axle nut off. Make sure the axle is loose. It is. I'm gonna take the brakes off. You don't normally have to do this when you're doing an axle, but we wanna see more of what's going on. So let's get those out of the way. Slide those off. And I'll just pull the rotor off. 
And I need to remove the tie rod end. Just take the cotter pin off and take the nut off. Can lower it down a little bit. You can use different special front end tools to separate these if you have some type of puller that you can put over there to prevent any damage. If you're careful, you can leave the nut on there and just give it a tap with a hammer. With the tie rod end off, I can manipulate the knuckle and you can kind of see why you actually need a CV joint in this area. You can see the amount of turning you're going to do. If this axle was straight, then it's not going to work so well. And you can kind of see how it works. And we'll take it apart later, but you can see a little bit of it in there. Now I'm going to take the knuckle off. You don't normally have to take the knuckle off completely. You could separate the lower ball joint and just swing it out of your way. But um, just to give us more room, more access to see what's going on, I'm going to separate it from the top. It's only an extra two bolts and then pull this all off. I'll pull the speed sensor off. And these two nuts. Now I'll just air chisel them out. And slide that out. And you can see I could slide this off right now. Just like that. But I'm going to pull this off anyway. There we go. With everything out of the way, you can kind of see how this is supposed to work a little bit. As the suspension goes up and down, the axle can move freely up and down. And then when the wheel's going to turn, the axle should turn back and forth like this. Now this axle is binding up, which is not good. If you're ever taking some suspension components apart and you take the axle off and you see that it's binding, that's going to have to be replaced. So you can have a clicking noise and it could be causing a binding or you could not even have any noise coming out of it. But if it's binding like this, it's not good. Now we need to remove the axle from the transmission side. And some vehicles may have bolts holding it in or like this vehicle has a C-clip and that's pretty common how it's held in. So we're going to have to get from the back side and pull it out. Now, if you're on the transmission side where there's a lot of fluid, you're going to want to put a drain bucket underneath. This side, there's no fluid, so we can just pop this out. There's many different tools you can use to try to get the shafts out. With this one being a C-clip, we need something to pry forward. You can try pry bars. You can try a tool like this, a fork that goes on the back side and just pries in between. But with something like this, it's not going to work in our situation. We need a little more, a bigger gap. We can use something like this with a slide hammer. You slide this behind here and then put the slide hammer on the end and pry it out that way. What usually works the best is just a big punch and a hammer. Just give it a tap from the back side. Once you get it moving, it's past the clip, and you can just grab it and slide it off. At this point, we're going to take this apart. We're going to talk about the tripod joint and the CV joint so you can see what's inside. All right, we got this cleaned up. It's a lot easier to see what's going on. You can see the inside of how the CV joint works. Um, you have little balls all around the outside, and you have on the center um, almost like a gear looking thing where the, ride, the balls are going to ride up and down. And then there's grooves in the housing um, that the balls are going to ride in. And there's this cage that's going to keep them all lined up properly. And as long as there's grease in there and this is completely sealed, um, it, should stay, it should stay for a long time. It should not wear out. The second that boot rips at any point, 
and then you get elements in there, that's when you're going to have problems. But otherwise, it's machined pretty well, and that's how that is. Now let's talk about the tripod side. The reason why we have the tripod side is because you need to be able to telescope the axle in and out. As the suspension goes up and down, um, the shaft is going to go in and out. And if you just had a regular CV joint on the inside, then it's gonna, you're going to have some binding issues. So that's why we have this. The reason why you don't have a tripod joint on the outside is because you don't get as much range. You can bend this pretty far as far as the tripod side when I put this on. And this goes in place right here. You're not going to be able to bend this as much, but it can bend and it can go in and out. The reason why they call it a tripod joint is pretty obvious because there's three of these wheels and there's ball bearings on the inside of there and those go into the housing right there. And those will spin while this is moving, just like that. This is less common to have a problem with the tripod joint, although if the boot rips then you're going to have issues the same as like the CV joint. Now we're going to replace the CV axle. We got this from 1AAuto.com. It's a lot easier to replace the whole axle versus just the joints or the boots. So let's slide that in position, line that up with the splines, and just give it a push. You can lock it down. Just make sure that it locks onto the little clip there, which it has. If not, you can slide this in, take a dead blow hammer or rubber mallet, and just give it a tap on the end. But this looks like it worked out pretty good for us. As you can see, the new one moves nice and freely. It spins around. There's no binding up in any direction, unlike the old one where it would bind up in certain areas. And this is how it's supposed to look. And now I'll just put the rest of it back together the same way it came apart. Wheel on. Now we're going to torque the wheels. I want to make sure I pump the brake pedal because we took the brakes off and take it for a ride. You hear that? No more noise. Super simple job to do. We had fun doing it. Fix the car. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our video. And if you need parts for your vehicle, make sure you click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com.